Hey everyone, Bethany here with Ask a Puppy Trainer Show. We're on episode number 52. And you had just Sparky last week. This week I managed to get rid of um, Sparky and, and Atlas is chewing on me. Yes, this is the puppy. I don't know how long she, he's going to last. He's adorable. He thinks that I taste delicious. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to last very long. Okay. <laughs> so I am going to jump right in. Just a reminder, you can ask your questions through our uh, direct messages or we have prompts on our Instagram stories where you can ask or you can comment below and we'll try to get to, uh, if you're on TikTok, we're super happy to have you, but for questions, just jump on our, our Instagram page. Seriously, Atlas, you have puppy teeth. Oh, there you go. Be a nice, be a nice puppy. All right, guys, I'm going to do some short ones. Atlas, no, come here. I See, this is very difficult with only one person with a puppy. Okay, she's just, this is actually not his fault. <laughs> he was laying down all nice and sweet, and now that I'm talking, it's causing stimulation. And, okay, yeah, chew on the leash. Just hang out, chew on the leash. All right, Serenity says, first thing y'all work on with a new puppy well oh and she's got a few more follow-ups but i'm going to start with just you know the first thing that you work on with a puppy <laughs> believe it or not you can address this kind of stuff right away hey you come here you definitely want a little bit of head control with with a little bit of a bigger dog that's really useful and you want to immediately start to lure with <laughs> with food <laughs> You want to immediately start to lure with food. And so you want to get your puppy working for their own food. That's ideal. And all they need to do is follow it around. So once you get the nose engaged, then, okay, good, goodbye, Atlas. Then you, <laughs> you can, yeah, there, there, you, you got him. <laughs> then you can um, start to layer on everything. So Dusty, come up here, old man. This is my, my Border Collie Dusty. He's probably about 10, 11, maybe even 12. Dusty, hop, hop. Yeah, you can get on the furniture. Good job, bud. <laughs> so he'll be easier. But at least you guys got to see cute Atlas. You know, sometimes you just can't fight the system. It's a puppy feeling feisty. <laughs> put, put the puppy away. Sit, sit, bud. So you, once you engage that nose, once they're like following, you know, food around, then you can go up for sit, down for down, lure to place, to have them jump on top of something as a target and come. Pretty much um, sit, place, and come, or name recognition, we start immediately. The other thing we start immediately is crate, or we call it house. Some people say kennel up, that's fine too. And then they, from day one, have to pause before they come out of their kennel. And then within a few days, or sometimes right away, depending on the maturity of the puppy, we have them wait at thresholds, front and back door. And so we go ahead and we start doing all of this stuff. If they were to eat out of a food bowl, I'd have some version, if they were driven, I'd have some version of holding the food bowl up, put it down, they go for it, lifting it up, of waiting right away. Now let's say I get a pretty sensitive, nervous puppy, that's a possibility. And if that's the case, um, and they're barely taking food from my hand because they're just a little unsure of their new situation, then I might just lure them with food and might drop it on the ground and I just work on come and getting out of their way, like taking back, going back a few steps on the ground. Then they start taking it from my hand and then I'm, then I'm up in the air. Then I'm having them jump on a, on a target, on place. So then I'll layer those things on. But if you've got a puppy right out of the gate that's taking food and is like, what do, what do I want to do? We start with everything pretty quickly because it all starts with a food lure. And then you're up, you're down, you're on place, come, you're, you're doing everything. And then within a, a week, maybe two, you're maybe even less depending on the size of your puppy breed. You're putting a leash on them and teaching leash pressure. So we actually layer all of these things much faster than you think. The key is they are working for their food all day long. So even if I'm doing a handful of kibble, like I have a a little chihuahua mix I'm working right now. She eats a ton, she's growing like a weed, and uh, it's not even a large breed dog. Oh, she's, a, she's a mix, so she's a little bigger. But at the end of the day, if I'm tired, I'm at least doing 10 handfuls 
of her kibble and just doing mouse come, good, here. <laughs> I'm at least doing something to cultivate that relationship, the dynamic, rather than just feeding her from a food bowl uh, for a few weeks. Okay, moving on. Uh, Serenity, I'll do one more of Serenity's uh, for right now. How to train a puppy to have leash manners, not bite the leash and no jumping. Well, you saw me really briefly do a little bit with Atlas, which is, you actually just do, <laughs> hi buddy. <laughs> you, he's like, oh, I'm being pet. Remember he's an old man. Um, you actually just do a little bit of leash pressure and this can is on harness too. We do the same thing for the little puppies. You stand up, you kind of hold out and away from you. He's like, why, why is this happening? You do a little bit of leash pressure and then you can redirect with your other hand. We do this for sit, which can be really helpful because it changes the brain into bite, bite, bite. Oh, okay, sit. Uh, kind of changes the brain and you're just very neutral. You don't yell because that just adds energy into the situation. I might do a, hey, no. I might do something small like that, but that's it. Like one time and then it's all energy, body language, leash, focus, that kind of stuff. Then get your puppy working for food again. Okay, just like I kind of mentioned before. And then you layer a little bit of leash pressure. So say I've been working on sit for three days three to five minutes, three times a day for three days. Now I'm gonna go sit and add a little leash pressure. Down, add a little leash pressure. I'm gonna start layering leash pressure onto what the puppy already knows to teach leash pressure. This is a foreign concept to them. It creates frustration, it holds them back from life. So you have to teach them what it means. And that can be on harness or in slip leash or whatever it is you're using. Okie dokie. Next. Mm, I love the support of Elisa. This is Elisa. I love the support that you offer to us struggling pet owners. Thanks again. Well, I'm really happy to hear that, Elisa. This, you know, it's our job to try to make training seem easy. Because teaching obedience is easy. But let's face it, we don't live with our dogs outdoors anymore. They're privy to all of our emotional highs and lows, our day-to-day -day stress, happiness, excitement. So then we become these very emotional creatures to them. And so they, they honestly listen to us less because of that. And so this whole new dynamic, which has happened in like the last 20 to 30 years of almost all dogs inside now, it's really changing things and it's harder. So uh, hang in there, everybody. It's definitely, you know, if you ever hear someone say, oh, it's just dog training, it's not rocket science. There is some truth to that, but now that we live with our dogs and they're privy to everything, <laughs> all of our COVID stress, don't even tell, like, like don't even go there, right? Um, it's a whole new ball game, basically. So hang in there, everybody. All right, as we basically figure out <laughs> how to do it more simply. <laughs> All right, in Indracia, I'm, I'm sure I butchered that what that's supposed to be. Hello, how do I prevent my puppy from leaking urine when he's excited? Ooh, this is a good one. I wish I had Sparky here for this one to kind of, so I could think for a second. Um, there's a few different reasons why puppies do this. You want to medically get checked out. Uh, you want to make sure if it's recent after a spay, that's not uncommon. Then there's marking. If you have a male dog that's already marking, lifting a leg, even females do that too. I have a little female that does it. It's ridiculous. She like lifts her leg and marks. Um, that's a little different. So let's assume that this is only submissive peeing. Submissive peeing is kind of what she describes. The puppy's excited, probably does like a low wiggle, and the tail might even be tucked as if it's nervous, but she's not. You know, she's just super submissive. And then as soon as you touch her or she touches your feet, it's like a leak, right? It's, it's a very difficult thing to, to stop, and you're gonna hate my answer, so I'm so sorry, but stop petting your puppy so much, and definitely stop petting your puppy when she's excited. So, <laughs> I know this is so tough, but when she runs up to you excitedly when you walk in the room, hey, settle down, good. And then everybody wants to pet their puppy because they got onto their puppy. Now their puppy is barely listening and then you touch it and it pees. That's, this goes for everybody. That's not when you touch your puppy. You settle the puppy down, hey, settle down, good. And walk away. 
Wait till the puppy has forgotten that you just entered the room, right? And then uh, when the puppy is more like this, then you can go to your puppy and pet your puppy. You still might get some leakage, okay? You might wanna always take your puppy out to pee outside before you have guests, but you're gonna have to really instruct your guest as if you had some aggressive dog to be like, don't touch her yet. It's the same thing because truly, I dealt with this with, with a dog, or two dogs I've had over the years um, have dealt with this, where it's, it's just any excitement at all, if it's nurtured, she'll always pee. It's not something that she'll magically stop doing. I will say, to sound a bit more positive, I started being way more strict with my little dog, Happy. She's elderly now too. It took about a year. It took about a year for full maturity to hit and me controlling everybody that came into the apartment. Um, we had a lot of get togethers back then. I was in my early 20s, so there was a lot of people coming in. And I had to control them, or I had to keep her in crate if they couldn't control themselves, and then take her out while everybody was in and settled. Then I would take her out to pee, then bring her back in, then wait till she calmed down, then she maybe got to say hi. And I'm still like around with a puppy pad just in case and warning everybody. So I know that it's a pain in the butt to deal with, but it's all about not rewarding excitement, but not just not rewarding it, but calming the puppy down then walking away and then nurturing uh, the puppy in other ways at other times. Hopefully your puppy can be calm like this and you can create excitement and then bring the excitement back down. Hopefully she'll let you do that without peeing, but I don't know, some of these puppies are really tough. Okay, submissive peeing is, it's tough. All right, Gary, the mini doodle. Should the puppy, one year old, thank you, these ages are so helpful. Please put the age in, guys. Should the puppy one-year-old have food left over in their bowl after every meal for their growth? A one year? Absolutely not. I think it's under a year. Oh, under a year. Oh, the little, oh, yeah. thank you. So this is under a year. No, not necessarily. There is this thing where, oh, puppies should eat as much as they want to. That's usually 16 weeks and under, and then you can kind of start you know, managing it a bit better. But honestly, it, it just depends on the puppy. So really look at it like a human. If she's got a little bit of weight on her, healthy weight, it's no big deal. She, once she's done eating, you do more. I, I would encourage you to make sure you're doing some work with her, with her food out of your hand. But 10, 15 minutes, whatever she doesn't eat, pull away, okay? A lot of times towards the end of the year, end of the day, they're less hungry. You don't want that food sitting out and the puppy thinking they can get to it whenever they want. You wanna remove it. It's also tough with potty training, things like that. But I don't like food staying out unless my puppy is underweight. And if that's the case, you should be trying other methods to try to get her to eat it all up at once and create some urgency. Then there's always the exception. There are some Huskies I see this occasionally with, but there's a lot of breeds especially when they're in that awkward like five to seven, eight month stage where you can feed them a ton of food and they just won't eat all of it and they're still skinny as all get out. That sometimes happens. There's even some breeds that are predisposed to being on the thinner side and, and there's just nothing you can do to get more food into them, okay? So um, it's just you have to take in your dog's own situation, breed, weight, health factors. You know, I would only be worried if I had some six, seven month old husky or husky mix that was very, very thin or a hunting dog, because that tends to happen to them. They grow up real fast, their legs shoot up and they get very thin if the muscle wasn't there. So if you've got, if you feel like the muscle isn't there, then you've got a problem on your hands. But if you just got a super skinny puppy that just is only eating so much, but the muscle tone is there, you probably don't need to worry. Maybe add a little protein, a little coconut oil or something, you're good to go. Okay, let's see here. Claudia Bell, adding to my streak of weekly questions. Thank you, Claudia, we appreciate it actually. She has been doing so much better. No crate accidents for over a week. Monitoring water intake, bingo. I also think she can hold her bladder better now too. Yeah, you have to build them up sometimes. It's a pain, but it works. Uh, more general question. Just curious about any tips on managing, preventing crate anxiety. This is a four month old Wheaton puppy. Wheaton Terrier, for anybody out there curious. I feel like we're making some progress 
but she's definitely still a little anxious. So anything helps. So preventing separation anxiety. Yeah, four months old, she should kind of be settled into crate by now and not be fussing too much. What I would say, this goes for everybody out there, unless you just happen to have a lazy puppy, is 20 minutes before you put your puppy in crate, 20 minutes after you bring your puppy out of crate, there's no petting, there's no emotion, and you're all business. Maybe with some of the easier puppies out there, you could do 10 minutes, but if you're seeing anxiety, it's all business. So what do I mean by that? What if you only have 15, 20 minutes to work your puppy and then you gotta leave again or, or put them back in their rotation? So what I mean by that is puppy waits, good. Leash, wait, good. Puppy come, stop and sit at door, good, let's go. Stop and sit at back door, go potty. Go on, go potty, good job. Good, go potty, let's go. Puppy come, sit, good. So see how everything is, is just a uh, matter of fact? I'm not adding any emotion into it. Rather than petting your puppy like this, oh, what a sweet puppy. Instead, I'm just like, good job. If, if, I, if, you, if you even pet the puppy. It's all like, yeah, nice. <laughs> so, so removing the emotion, the excitement is really, really helpful for your puppies. 15 to 20 minutes before you leave and 15 to 20 minutes after you get home. After you get home specifically, and by home I mean let your puppy out again. Really uh, wait till your puppy is, is kind of like this and forgot that you even let them out before you give the affection. I'm not saying no affection. I'm saying wait till your puppy is chill, chewing on their own chew toy, or you've worked them and they're in the playpen for free time. You know, whatever the case is, wait till they're more just like whatever. They're not excited about being out of crate anymore. Then you can go with your puppy, get them riled up, play, 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 play. Like I don't mind any of that because if you create it when the puppy is calm, you can bring it back down. So you start to be in control of your puppy's emotions. That's critical when uh, preventing separation anxiety. Also, just make sure the dog is already waiting for food. If it's coming out of a food bowl, waiting at crate door. If the puppy is on leash, every door that opens, even in the house, the puppy waits. Because if they get into the habit of when the bedroom door opens, they fly through, it's a bad habit. So they go ahead and stop and sit there too. Now, if the door is just open, that's no big deal. But you don't want to create this link of a door opening with a puppy with the dog flying through it like that's the cue to fly through a door and then later you try to change it with the car door because your puppy flew out of it and almost got run over it doesn't make sense to them so go ahead and slow things down for them and the other thing is when you give food when you give food to your puppy make it like puppy dusty sit good down good pause 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 then reach in then deliver food so my point is slow down your food delivery if your puppy is doing good go slower puppy house down good then get food then deliver or if you had food in your hand to lure that's fine i will lure the puppy into a sit down crate down then stand up straight pause good then deliver the food. And I had food in my hand for luring the whole time because my puppy needs it. But you don't have to deliver it right away. Really slow things down. Um, the, all those things are super big helps on preventing separation anxiety. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see. Let me jump back to... Oh yeah, I'm doing good on time. Okay, the miracle. Serenity says, what does an average day look like for a puppy um, and a puppy trainer? Well, first of all, you are the trainer of your own puppy. It's your job. It's basically you have a child and it's your job to raise them. And so you have to put your, your trainer hat on. I did not, you know, well, I didn't have him as a puppy, but even my first six months of owning Dusty, I was not like, oh, this is my new companion. There was no furniture. There was no rushing the door, the food bowl, none of that. I was purely there to teach him how to fit into our life, what the expectations were, to teach him and guide him and then love on him. 
okay? And then there was still no furniture for a while because he was wild. <laughs> and then over time, I'd say six months to a year, and, and it became the new normal, like this is you know the way things are, then I was able to be more flexible on these privileges. But that, for a puppy, that's two years old. So you're raising a, a, a baby, a toddler, um, a pre-adolescent, an adolescent, and then around the two, sometimes one and a half year mark if you have an easy puppy, but two, two and a half, three years, it was three years for my German Shepherd, that's why I mentioned that, all dogs are different, where you start to get more of that companion that you've been working so hard for. So I just need you to make sure that you're looking at it that way. Okay, average day in the life of a puppy. To me, this really does depend on the puppy. But let's say I have the average puppy, average medium energy, um, food motivated but not insane, not really super shy, things like that. Just Let's, let's just say medium of the road puppy. Uh, truly, let's say I have it in my house and I'm training. Truly, I wake up in the morning and my robe is still on and I make my coffee or my morning drink or whatever I'm having and I, in my pocket I have the breakfast and I walk around my house and I go, puppy come, good, here you go. <laughs> puppy come, good, here you go. And then as I wake up a little bit more, I might be like, mouse come, sit, good, break. You know, and put some food on the ground and then go into the next room. Puppy come, <laughs> sit, break, you know, and then layer down and things like that. And that's the morning exercise for kibble after a potty break. And then back in crate till I fully am awake. <laughs> so she goes back in crate, a puppy goes back in crate pretty quickly. It's like 10 minutes of work after a potty chance and a water chance, okay? Then pull her out, 15 minutes of play, five, 10 minutes of work again on maybe place and break or something, something pretty easy like a warm up just for a few minutes and then the walk. And, and even, even with really young puppies, I'll work the driveway or I'll work in front of the home or in the backyard. Like I'll still do something outdoorsy. Then crate, if the puppy can do it, two, three hours. Again, it really depends on the age of the puppy. And then I just rinse and repeat. Simple as that. Okay. Now if I'm not home, it's different. If I'm like an owner that's not home all day, it is different. It's tougher, of course but it's still you're getting in at least two bouts of like 15 minutes of work in the mornings and uh, in the evenings of structured work where it's food and you're teaching obedience okie dokie let's go to what time is it okay i'm doing good lindsay lindsay beck hey guys thank you so much for answering my question last week Ooh, repeat people thank you uh last week yeah, it's sparky sorry all right Things are going well with Poppy on the leash. Poppy, that's super cute. Um, my next question is how to potty train her with carpet in the house. Oh, I'm guessing to not go on carpet in the house. Our living room and kitchen is tile, but our dining room is carpet. We blocked it off with gates. Okay, I'm with you now. We have a doggy door. She hasn't had any accidents on the tile in two weeks. How do I introduce the carpet so she doesn't have accidents? Okay, all right. Okay, you don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how old your puppy is, but she, she's pretty young, around 12 weeks. 12 12 weeks old. Yeah, she sounds super young. Um, when you have gone a month with no potty accidents in the house, then you could have her maybe on leash and sit in a chair and have her on the ground with a chew toy if that's where the carpeted area is for 5, 10, 15 minutes. And if she starts to move around, um, I would get up and give her a potty break if she doesn't settle down easily. It's just, you just don't because so much of potty training is preventative. So much of it is preventative. And if I'm being honest, I'm trying to think the last time I did like a really long puppy training, it was like a month. Yeah. It's like you want a month with no accidents. And then if you do have an accident on the carpet, even if it was just an accident, it was usually the human's fault. It really is. Maybe they just had water 10 minutes ago and then ran around and played. They're going to pee. And so it, then you go back to no carpet just because you don't want the carpet to become an option because some puppies, you get two seconds of some sort of sniffing before they go or, or some sort of um, precursor to them potty and you may miss it. And then they go twice, three times on the carpet in a couple of weeks. It's now an option if mom doesn't see my previous cues. 
So that's why we're super hesitant with the carpet situation. Oh, I have something else to say. So I used to train out of an apartment and I would even have dogs come and stay with me. So I would do like fostering puppies and, and all kinds of things. So we put a tarp down and then a cheap mat. I don't know if Amazon was as popular back then, but I think it was like Lowe's. And we went and got a cheap mat to put down over the carpeted area where the playpen was because we didn't have enough tile space. And, uh, and, and I worked the puppy in that area as well because I just didn't have a lot of space I was dealing with. So there's a tip as well. Again, it's just about being preventative. It's really hard to go backwards. <laughs> so be preventative. Okay. Chankster. Hello. I have a question. Do you have tips on cutting puppy's nails? I've tried treats, letting him see the nail cutter, holding his paw, playing with the paw. I've done this every day since he's been eight weeks old. He's 12 weeks old, still fights it and runs away. Um, it's a battle. What type of nail cutter do you recommend? Well, how, I'm a little curious. Like, how is the puppy able to run away? Because that's a big no-no. Like, if your puppy has the ability to run away from you, you're fighting a losing battle. So it's like I would have a leash on my puppy, and you know I'm in some sort of situation. He does not. He'll never love his nails being trimmed because um, he's okay with me touching them. Sound familiar? So he's never gonna love it, but he, they need to tolerate it, right? So anyway, I might need help. I might need someone to hold my puppy. He's too big. <laughs> hold my puppy like this. And then I do the, the nail situation. I hold the paw and do the nail situation. Your puppy should never be allowed to flee. If that's happened to you a couple of times, it makes it really, really tough. Okay, so. Has a follow-up question. Are you done with that one? Nope. Okay. I'll get back to you, Lindsay. Don't worry. So um, that's a big, a big part of it. The other part of it is with, we like the Dremel. The Dremel is scary because it's noisy and if you put con if you don't go short little quicks then it can feel hot on the nail because it's like a sander right so you want short ones and you have to be careful if there's fluff because the fluff can get sucked into the dremel <laughs> so i know it's all these pros and cons um so we but i do like dremel and then there's kinds you can get with like a uh cover to it it's like a protective cover less likely to suck the fur in okay so those are good but if you're going to use nail clippers you only they can feel it on the quick and it is not pleasant at all and so you only bear you barely take off a little on the end and then a little more and a little more and you stay away from the uh, cuticle all right if you can't see the cuticle try putting a flashlight underneath if your puppy has black black as black nails I do not do clippers. I'm too worried. I've clipped cuticles before. It is not fun and I only use the Dremel. And, and I, I think you need some help. I think you need some help to like one person hold the puppy and just get them through it, you know? And you can still use food if they'll take food, but just kind of charge forward and hopefully they'll be like, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought, you know? Okay, uh, Lindsay, follow-up question? Yeah, so if she does have an accident on the carpet after a month, block it off and wait a month again, or when could I try again? Um, if she has an accident in the house and, or and whether it's the carpet, it could have been the tile, could have been the carpet, could have been anything. It's not really about blocking off the carpet. It's about doing a better job. Like I would take that and be like, oh man, seriously on the carpet? Well, that could have easily has been on the tile. So in my head, I'm like, well, she's been doing really good for a few weeks. I probably got a little too lax taking her out and paying attention. So yes, I'm going, if, if, I, if I am too busy during the day on her free time, even though we don't really give puppies free time, but if I'm assuming that's what you're trying to do, if you were to do that and you can't actually watch her, there, there wouldn't be any freedom. It would only be on tile. Unless you're sitting there with her on leash, watching her like a hawk, and catching those precursors before you, you take her out. So to me, if there's a potty accident anywhere, tile, carpet, anywhere, to me it's like, okay, what did I miss? What, what, what did I miss? That's what you have to ask yourself. The difference is carpet holds, carpet and wood holds scent. There is no magical substance out there that gets rid of urine scent. So that's why they will really get used to going on carpet faster than anything else. Okay. Cassie says, um, I am, I've got two more and I'm going to get through both of them in 60 seconds. Here we go. Cassie says 12, 12 week old mini golden doodle biting, chewing toys, treats, bones. So he won't chew the rug. Okay. Sometimes that works. 
Um, also crate help. He does amazing at night. During the day when I put him in, he still gets a high-pitched barking when home. Okay, so I earlier, Cassie, I talked about preventing separation anxiety. So if you're not live right now and saw that, when you see the replay, go down. Um, Ricky is awesome, my boss. She timestamps these things and uh, go and look for the separation anxiety question and please listen to that. I'm not trying to push you off. I just already kind of answered it. So, oh, and make sure you're covering the crate, playing something that drowns out outside noises. Could be a fan, white noise machine, and the radio. Those, something to drown out noise, like white noise or a fan, plus a radio or TV show or something like that, super helpful. One more question. I have him blocked in the kitchen with access to his crate always. If he's left in this area, even if we're just a few feet away on the other side of the barricade, he whines and barks too. He's not happy. So sometimes supervised separation doesn't work. The puppy sees you and doesn't understand why the puppy can't get to you. That's because the brain is still in follower mode. You haven't shut down follower mode yet. And to be honest, it's a very hard thing to do. Puppies either naturally do it and it's easy. They just mess with stuff in their crate and then they fall asleep, right? That's the snuffle mat, Kong, licking food out of a Kong and then they pass out. If they don't pass out, they get up and turn around and bark at you. You have to have a valuable no and create a boundary on top of the, the, the boundary of the pen. So it's like, no, cut it out. And you have to really focus and you're stern and you wait for them to settle. Then you take a few steps away. They whine again, turn, no. What you're trying to do, hey, so, and I'm not saying yell at your dog. It's like one no. And then it's just, hey, facing directly, hips straight forward, not like relaxed. You, you mean it. It's like, I'm, I'm not focused on you right now. It's to stop the dog's brain from being in follower mode. If you just walk by the playpen or your kids even, and the puppy's like excited and they just keep going, it's, it builds stress. It builds anxiety, excitement, anxiety in the dog. And then before long, they're barking desperate for attention because nobody is telling them no. But I'm not going to lie, this is not an easy thing to do. And depending on the puppy, it could be darn near impossible. Like you, ha you almost have to have the puppy out for supervised separation when you're training, like training time, because it's very difficult. So don't even sweat it. Put the puppy in another room, in crate, like I mentioned before, in their, in their crate, in their quiet room, okay? All right, last one. I've, I have to squeeze this in here because Sparky answered it last week and he did not give multi-layered um, answers. He doesn't adapt well to people at home and their different things. So, okay, so I saved you for last, Elisa Benson. <laughs> okay, Libby's my six-month-old Cavalier. She's a breeder, I'll be showing her, um, and the breeder will be showing her. So not you, you have the breeder doing it. She's instructed us not to teach her sit. She can lay down, stand, come, shake, but to be, to shake, they usually are in a sit, so I might skip shake. Uh, but to be honest, it's hard to go past these basic commands without a sit, central starting point. Would you teach the sit command knowing you can teach stand, stay, other commands needed for a show? I need advice on how to train everything without a sit command. Um, I have the mindset that every dog can learn commands and teaching a sit command to a show dog is bad. It is, by the way, for anybody not knowing this, it is. It's, it's okay to do it when the dog is already fairly mature, but you don't drill it because the dog will sit in the show ring constantly and it's a pain. So I'm guessing Sparky was like, this doesn't make sense. This makes your dog's, your life so much harder. He's not wrong if that's kind of where he was going. I wish I'd listened to it before this. <laughs> but anyway, I do come from the show world, um, so the confirmation, anybody ever seen the Westminster shows where all the dogs like run around the ring in a circle? You don't do a lot of sitting with those dogs because they'll auto sit a lot in the ring. They'll get bored, they'll sit, they'll lay down, so you don't want to do that. So I'm okay with it. You just really do need to stay away from sit. What you need to do is, um, and I'm gonna assume you don't have any behavioral issues with your dog because if you do, skipping the sit, it's, it's very hard. You have to kind of choose what you want to do. But let's say, you can do stand and down. So you want to, instead of doing up in the air for sit and then down to the ground, you have to, Dusty, you have to do the nose down to the ground. And then what happens is their butt stays up in the air a really long time sometimes. 
and you just have to be patient to where they get that butt all the way down. Um, another thing you can do, King Charles Cavalier is kind of small, so you can do down, like sitting in a chair, and you can lure them under your legs. I'm not really in a good position to do this, but I've got the treat over here, and I get my puppy's attention, and I actually lure them under my legs so their butt has to go down. That's another good way of doing it. Um, yeah, so there's some ways. You can, definitely, there's some ways out there to do it. The big thing I would say that I saw in the show world which is a real problem. I hope I don't get any like clap back for this, but they, they don't. Oh man, I'm generalizing. This is so bad. Okay, so some people don't uh, do thresholds and make the dog wait and be calm and they let all that stuff kind of go because they don't have their sit. Well, I can still do move when I move, stop when I stop. I can do leash pressure work, turns, and then when I pause, my dog has to pause with me. They just don't have to sit. So what does that mean? I can still be like, hey, hey, sorry, Dusty. I can still give guidance to teach them to pause with me, just not an SIT. Now, if they do sit, they do not get in trouble. Do not correct your dog for not sitting. Excuse me. What you do instead is you, if they do do a sit, just because you kind of did leash pressure back and they're like, well, I don't know what you want from me. They're not paying attention. So they just sit down. Instead, go stand and do your stand. Teach a stand command right next to you with a flat hand, kind of like touch. That's how you want to do that when you're out on a walk. And you can do a food lure for that. So don't ever get them. They, don't, they shouldn't get in trouble for sitting. Some show people do that. Ooh, I would never do that. But you can lure, always lure them out, have them stand, and then they get a treat for standing. Let's see, what else, what else? I mean, that's about it. You still do your thresholds. You still make them wait and crate. It's just they need to be standing or laying down. I would do stand more often because you don't want the dog laying down a lot in the ring either. So I open the door. The dog kind of pushes forward. No, a little block with the knee, leash pressure back. They need to stand, look at an open door, pause, let's go, and walk through together or a little bit in front of your puppy. All of those things you should still be doing. You just want a stand. And one more thing, and I'm gonna let you guys go, is watch the tail. So if the tail is still doing this, and he's in a stand, that's why sit is good, because it calms the brain down. It puts the brain in a backwards motion. So you just have a little bit more work on your hands. You need a little bit more patience to honestly, you just wait. Just don't rush, have an extra beat or two at the door and let that tail calm down. Let's go. That way you don't nurture excitement, okay? So you just need a little more patience Hopefully that's enough. Okay guys, um, I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye everybody.